So welcome to this amazing channel named Geeks for Geek School. I am your host in those Gaurav Kumar Jain, and uh, today we are going to check out how we can fade an LED on Tinkercad using Arduino Uno R3. But before diving into the platform, I would first like to tell you again about this course which we guys have come up with so that the students who are new on our channel can come to know about this amazing uh, you know course which we have come up with so that's the web page with a, on which you can find the information related to this course right so it's based on app lab if you want to learn how you can develop mobile applications then this course is made for you. So in this course, we guys will be telling you how you can develop mobile apps, how you can design user interfaces for an application. If you, may, if you want to make your app interactive, then how can you do that with the help of coding, right? Besides, uh, we guys will be uh, teaching you how you can design multi-screen applications right so if you want to know about all these things then this course uh, you can opt for so if you'll come down and if you'll click on this button over here automatically it will open for you a new tab to which we have linked a pdf file in which you'll find all the 18 topics that we will cover in this course right so these are the 18 topics we'll start right from the basic things and gradually when you'll become confident in understanding the basic things in developing and understanding about what is uh, actually a mobile applications uh, a mobile application and what all things do we require for making the mobile application once you are done with developing and understanding of all those basic things we will then gradually move towards understanding the core concepts of uh, mobile app development right so besides these 18 topics there will be lot more fun there will be lot many things that you guys will be taking away from the online coding classes that we will provide you in this course right now it is in a very high demand so the seats uh, are limited why just because of the affordable pricing of this course right if you want to get a good discount on the total course fee so you can find in the description section a promo code is there so you can make use of that promo code and avail a very good discount on the total course fee right so don't waste your time go ahead and book your seats besides that besides this if you have any issues if you want to get in touch with one of our executives and uh, get your issues sorted out you guys are most welcome to do that. Geeks for Geeks is everywhere today. We are into everything. We deal with every kind of uh, software, hardware, as well as, you know, coding related things. So we are into web development also. We are into machine learning, artificial intelligence, data science. So if you, if you have interest in these things, if you want to learn some bigger things, right like artificial intelligence machine learning data science so we are there to help you out we have experienced mentors with us which are ready to share their amazing uh, knowledge and experience with you guys right so just check out the courses which we guys are offering today to the students you guys can visit our uh, main website where you can f you can find the list of courses uh, which we are offering to our students right in case you find anything appealing anything interesting you can get in touch with our executive team or you can put your uh, you can make use of the comment section definitely put your comments over there put your queries over there we are there to sort it out for you right if we'll not sort it out today we'll definitely do it tomorrow but you will get the answer to your queries whatever you'll put up in uh, before us Okay, so let's uh, dive into the platform now. So to access the simulator, that is the Tinkercad virtual environment, 
we can type tinkercad over here so the students who are new let me tell you how you can access tinkercads just type tinkercad.com in the search box that's what the web page you will see then you can click on this first hyperlink right and automatically it will redirect you to a very beautiful web page and there you'll find right on the top the join now option if you're new on this platform then you'll see that join now option you can make use of that and create your own account if you don't know how you can how to create your own account on this amazing platform then you can check out the very first tutorial i shooted some days back in which i uh, you know i explained the students uh, how tinkercad works what is tinkercad what all things can we do on this platform and how can we create our account on this platform just visit that tutorial you will come to know about each and every basic things which is required to understand the uh, you know formation of virtual circuits on the virtual environment which tinkercad offers us okay so let's now come on this circuits and as soon as you'll click on this circuits you'll see this create new circuit option will get enabled click on this create new circuit option to access the virtual environment on which you can create electronic circuits besides that let me uh, check whether i am live or not right now everything is going fine i think you'll see this create yes new everything is going fine let me see who all have joined in okay habir abiram kumar hello dear no problem if you were not able to attend my past classes okay i hope you are good now dear great to see you back just take care of yourself right okay so that's the environment i was talking about now there are four things that we require to develop the thing that we are uh, here to develop today so the first thing that we require is an arduino uno uh, r3 board from where can we get it we can change the option in this drop down first from basic to all right so that we can see all the components in this navigation pane now we can type arduino over here okay so we have this arduino uno r3 circuit let's pick it and drop it over here fine so we have the circuit now now i would like to make use of an uh, of a breadboard okay so for that we will have to type breadboard and these are the circuits you are going to come across so i would like to make use of this breadboard small okay small breadboard and that's the one okay so we have now two components with us which we require for creating the circuit then the third thing that i want is an led led so we can simply type over here led and that's what you are going to see right on the top of this navigation pane so let's bring this led over here and i'm going to put it uh, i hope i think this point is fine yeah so i'm putting it over here now we can make use of a resistor that's the one so i am putting it over here because i want to connect you know this point i want to connect these points these points are already connected to each other right so i want to connect this row or you can say this column with this point right now i'll tell you why i have made this connection let me first connect this arduino uno board with this breadboard 
so the way we connected it yesterday the same way we are going to connect it today also okay so we are going to make use of uh, a black wire for connecting the one of these ground points to the negative terminal of this breadboard absolutely right so i'm changing the color to black and let's click on this ground point so we have this black wire with us okay then we need to go up right on the top over here we can click and then we can connect it to this negative terminal fine so we have successfully connected the ground point of arduino uno r3 board with a negative terminal of this breadboard right now it's time for us to connect the 5 volt point of this uh, arduino uno r3 board with the positive terminal of this breadboard right so we can click on this 5 volt and let's uh, let's not make use of this black wire i would like to make use of a uh, red wire because it's a live connection that i'm making okay so red over here then we can come over here and let's connect it to this positive terminal so this ground point of this arduino uno is connected to this negative terminal and the uh, 5 volt point is connected uh, to this positive terminal of this breadboard okay now uh, see this negative terminal the current is going to flow like this it will come like this and then it will flow like this right now we have already connected one point of this uh, we haven't connected this led yet with this arduino uno r3 board now we have to connect that we have already connected one point of this led that is the cathode point right which is the negative terminal as i've told you in the very first lecture cathode is negative in nature and anode is positive in nature because anode attracts anions anions means an and means single and cations means cut cut means plus so cations move towards cathode that is the reason cathode is negative and anode is positive right so if, if you can't remember like this cat or an you can just remember this thing that uh, cathode is negative right and anode is positive so as you can see cathode is connected with this resistance and this terminal one of this resistance is connected to this negatively charged or you can say this negative terminal of this breadboard right so this connection is perfectly fine we have to now connect this anode with the positive terminal so we cannot do it like this we cannot simply uh, you know just a second we cannot simply uh, connect it like this right our circuit will not work then what exactly we have to do we have to connect it with any of these points why so as to make a complete circuit the circuit is, is starting from this arduino uno board uh, arduino uno r3 board so it has to end also at the same point where it is starting then only a cycle will uh, will be made right so then only a complete circuit will be made as i've told you if you will code define the code properly you you uh, you know there is no error in the code you have defined if your circuit is incomplete your code will not work it will not give you the proper output so remember this thing you have to 
make a complete circuit if you want to get a correct output so what we can do for making this circuit complete we can connect this point and I would like to use some other wire let's use yellow so I'm connecting this one with how about minus 9 I think that is going to be fine yep so I'm connecting the, I've connected this point with this minus 9 point of Arduino Uno R3 right so that's the connection which I have made now you know you can do one more thing if you want to use this part of uh, this breadboard so you can you can connect this negative terminal right you can connect this negative terminal with the help of this black wire with the negative terminal of this you know of this part similarly you can connect this positive terminal I'm using red wire now sorry just a second I will have to I need to change the color of the wire to black yep and then I would like to make use of a red color wire now I'm connecting this positive terminal with the positive terminal of this part right so that is how you can you know use both the parts if you want to but if you'll not do if you'll not connect this negative to this negative or positive to this positive then also your circuit is complete you're going to get the correct output right for now I am done with connecting this breadboard this LED and this Arduino Uno R3 board to an to a circuit and they are now forming a complete circuit let me know if you have any queries related to the connection so that I can help you guys with the same if you have any connection if you have any uh, queries related to the connection that I, connections that I've made for creating this complete circuit that you are able to see right now let me know now so that I can help you guys with your queries I am checking this uh, comment section right now okay I'm not able to see any queries it means that everything is clear to you however if while making the connection you come across any issue let me know then and there so that I can help you guys with your queries and I can resolve the same right now let's move to the coding section so today instead of using block based coding I would like to use uh, text based coding okay let's use text based coding for coding this electrical circuit so for that we have to first come on this code for accessing the coding panel now we can simply change it to text right so that's what you are going to see now if you do not want to if you do not want me to use text I can use blocks also no problem let's do one thing let's keep it a mix of blocks in text right so we are right now using this block based coding and afterwards I'll change it to text based coding now the first thing we need to do is we need to define uh, you know a count loop so that's what we need right and I would like to count it by 5 okay and you know uh, it's like a for loop fine over here we have a for loop when I will change it into text based coding you will be able to see exactly what is uh, creating what is the code which is running behind this blocks block over here right and I would like to keep it from 0 to I think 255 is going to be a good option yeah so count up by 5 for I from 0 to 255 and then we can make use of uh, set pin we can set the value of the pin so set pin and because the output we have connected it to pin number 9 see we have connected this point to the pin number 9 of Arduino Uno R3 
so here we can select pin number 9 right and let's define a variable with the help of which we can keep a check on the brightness of the LED so create variable and bright so with this name I am creating a variable okay now I would like to set the value of this variable first so I'm setting it equal to what shall I set it now initially to so we can set it initially to 0 right and after that just a second we can set the pin to do we have any other block with the help of which we can okay instead of using this let's use this one because I want to set the value I would like to make the value of this pin 9 dependent on the dependent on this variables value right so that's the reason I you I've used this and then we can define a weight of some seconds so let's make use of this block and let's change this to I think 25 is going to be a good option and let's uh, change it to milliseconds because seconds is going to be a lot of time fine so that's the code now let me just convert it into text based coding and show you exactly uh, what it has what it is actually so we defined we defined uh, a variable with name bright right and we initialized it with this value 0 and as you know we used a count loop right so that loop is this that's the count loop this is the whole text based coding which is creating that count loop what all things do we have in this count loop let me tell you that so bright is equal to 0 so the value of bright is equal to 0 right and then we have i is equals to 0 so in in place of i it should be brightness because i want to uh, i want to see the led fading right so we can change it to bright right there is no need of u we can change all the eyes to bright like this right so brightness will start from 0 it will be smaller than or equal to 2 to 55 and then brightness plus is equal to 5 so every time this condition will become true the value of brightness will get incremented by 5 right so that's what is going to happen now after that analog 9 bright so that is going to uh, you know give us the output and then there will be a delay of 25 seconds if you want you can use another for loop like this okay and here you can I think here also everything is going to remain the same or do we have to change anything I think everything is fine yeah and here we have one more function with name setup right so in setup what we have done we have set up the pin mode equal to 9 because that's the one from which we are going to get the output right so that's the reason 9 is mentioned over here if you will change it you will not get the correct output remember this thing right let's now see whether with the help of this code we are going to get the correct output or not so I would like to now start the simulation okay so we are able to see this LED fading okay and it is looking amazing right now if you want to change its color suppose you want to change it to uh, yellow right so you can do it very easily let's again run this simulation so that's what you will get as an output right so that's the code that's the whole code which I have defined over here okay 
and these are the if you want you can take a snapshot of this code of this whole code try it out yourself in case you come across any issue put your queries in the comment section so that i can see all your queries i can go through them and i can help you guys out in resolving your queries right if you will not speak anything if you will not share with me your queries they will i will not be able to sort them out fine let me now check the comment section also before i explain you the next part so by the time you guys can go through uh, this connections that i have made okay so i am not able to see any queries over here in the comment section i think everything whatever i have taught in this lecture you have understood everything even if while you know uh, designing this circuit you come across any issue i am there to sort it out remember this thing let me again brief you about what all things i have done so i first uh, grab grab this arduino uno r3 board and i put it over here in this environment then i grabbed uh, this breadboard small and i put it right on the top of this arduino uno r3 board i connected this ground point of this board with this negative terminal of this breadboard and this 5 volt to this positive terminal okay and this led i have connected to these two points over here then i made use of a resistor why the resistor is uh, important because i don't want my led to burn out so i need a component which can keep a control which can keep a check on the amount of current flowing through the circuit so resistor is a is one of the components which can help us in doing the same so i put this resistance over here and then i connected this resistance to the negative terminal right to this negative terminal of this uh, uh, breadboard and this second point which is next to the point to which i connected this terminal to with the breadboard next point which is uh, there i connected it with the minus 9 volt point of arduino uno r3 board right if i'll remove even if i'll remove this these two connections if i'll remove this connection and if i'll remove this wire from here let's see whether we'll be able to get the required output or not yes we are getting the required output the connections which i made you know these two wires which i've placed over here it's just because if you if just to tell you that if you want to use this part of the breadboard then you will have to first uh, you know get the current over here in this part right so how you will get the current you have to connect this negative terminal with this negative terminal and this positive terminal with this positive terminal then only you will be able to get the current flow over here in this part otherwise you will not get the current and if you will not get the current you will not get the output right okay now let's see if we can add something else so i am searching for a multimeter not this one exactly uh, yeah uh, it's not the multimeter sorry it's the oscilloscope i'm looking for i think i just saw it yeah that's the one i was looking for so i'm putting it over here and let me tell you how you can you know use this oscilloscope so you can use it for checking the uh, waves okay now what you have to do exactly you can connect this negative terminal right with this point because it is the it is uh, the column 
right to which this cathode is connected which is a negative point right which is negative in nature so we can connect this negative point of the oscilloscope with this point and this positive point with this point okay now let's run this start this simulation and see what's gonna happen so we'll see these kind of waves right we'll see these waves over here okay now what this oscilloscope is doing let me just show it to you so oscilloscope electronic test equipment for measuring output signals right so that's the output signal these are the signals which this electronic circuit is producing right now okay so with the help of oscilloscope you can measure the output signals of a of an electronic circuit so this is it from my side in this lecture hope you guys enjoyed this one a lot now before ending this lecture i would again like to show you the web page on which the app lab course is given the information related to the app lab course is given so that's the web page the url of this web page is there in the description section if you want to check it if you are interested in uh, taking this course you can check out the url and visit this web page where you can find all the information related to the course that we have come up with so if you want to learn how you can develop mobile applications then this course is made for you go ahead uh, grab the opportunity to be a part of the online coding classes which we are providing in these in this course right so it will you are going to experience a completely new world of mobile app development where there is lot of things to learn and you are going to take away lot many things in this course this uh, course is very afford very much affordable if you want to get a very good discount on this total course fee you can check out the description section you'll find a promo code over there use it and get a very good discount on the total course fee right so thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial this is it from my side have a great day and hope to see you in the next lecture too bye bye everyone take care